Hey, 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 you're sitting, hey, hey, you're sitting under a civic, like a masterpiece from the gods. Oh. Guys, come on, come, get, get out of here. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get out of here, get, come on, go. Guys, take your oh. liver, f*** your cheesels. Hey, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Man, take your cheesels. Get out of here. Come on, guys. Oh, boy. That, uh... That was the whole thing. Uh, so, I guess welcome back to Hyperion. So sorry about whatever that was. Honestly, that's literally what happens every single time we try and film here, which is lovely for the community part. Anyway. Welcome back to Hyperbole Automotive. This is episode two. If you missed the first one, I was giving you the history of the Civic, why we chose it, why it's here, what I kind of tried to break it doing, uh, and basically how we ended up with a hole in the block, which we'll go through later. But today, today's really important. I want to kind of point out the bits and pieces that we're putting into this bad boy. Um, and, and look, I know there's going to be heaps of things you can put in these cars, but the whole fact is that we're aiming for budget and budget racing and trying to encourage people to get into track days. Yeah, so there's heaps of things we could, but we're not going to put into it. We're, drinking, we're going to try to keep this cost down, but fun up. So hopefully you can enjoy us on this journey. And let's kick off with this sexy, sexy, sexy carbon air box. Now, this lovely piece is by CDA. Um, and I know a lot of people run these and a lot of people seem to love them. Um, and there's, there's lots of different airbox types. Like I've got a DC5 Integra Type R and that runs the Toda individual throttle bodies. Um, and I just run socks on that because it sounds glorious at 9,000 RPM. This, this kind of takes care of all that sucking in that fresh air stuff. It's a really well-built product. It's carbon on the outside. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's all filtered on the inside and fully enclosed. So hopefully that means it's getting all the cool air into the engine where it's meant to be and ensuring that it's filtered. So excited to jam this on to, you know, make sure we're sucking up that cold air. So we just spoke about how we got the air inside the engine. So how are we going to get all that dirty air out? Let me introduce the spaghetti extractor. It's all over the shop. I get it. And honestly, it's probably not going to add a whole lot of power, but it looks cool. And honestly, I think looks add at least five horsepower, no? Like stickers add 10. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be at least five horsepower. There's, there's a few things though. This, even though it is built for the lovely D16, it doesn't exactly fit our D16. It fouls on the, uh, the dipstick reservoir. Uh, so that, that's a bit of an issue and we'll probably have to heat that up and modify it. Thankfully it's alloy, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And Honestly, I don't know how much better this is actually going to be versus a stock manifold. But again, we're going for looks in this case, and we've got a couple of other options that we can play with. But this is just a this is just a little used find um, that I bought when someone's planning out their car. Never run it. We're going to run it now. We're going to see what it sounds like, uh, and then hopefully we'll be decently surprised by the power it makes. I haven't gone through what's in the engine yet and why we need to look after it, but this is hypercritical. So if you're investing money into your motor and you're going to be tracking your car, it's probably a good idea that you look after the oil inside the engine. And the best way to do that is to invest yourself in an oil cooler. These are not too expensive. You can pick them up on all kinds of aftermarket websites. This one is a Cetra. Don't crucify me if I said that wrong. I'm not that educated or that fancy, but it looks cool. It's super light. It's quite thick, uh, which means hopefully it'll be transitioning that nice cool air through the veins of the oil cooler to really cool down that charge and ensure the oil that we get pumping through the engine is as cool as possible. Now, part of oil management comes down to the oil pump. Super boring part. You're like, Sean, why are you showing me your oil pump in plastic? Well, this oil pump is a little bit special. It's one of the ported versions from the guys at 4P Performance over in the US. Um, they port these out so they flow better 
Uh, they push a lot more oil through it. And again, it's all in the same sense of trying to keep that oil pressure consistent, trying to keep the oil cool, and trying to keep the engine as healthy as possible for as long as possible. You gotta remember, even a little single jingle D16 like this is getting bounced off the limiter continuously around circuits. So investing in something that's gonna keep that oil temp down and consistent, it's well worthwhile. Now, while we're talking about keeping your oil cool, you also have to keep your coolant running through the motor. I know, again, this is not sexy stuff, but this is kind of essential motorsport stuff, even at grassroots level. So invest in a brand new oil pump when you're rebuilding that engine. Make sure that you've got a big shiny radiator. Again, it's not that so much size, like the, the, the actual size and air capture rate is important. But thickness, placement, making sure there's nothing obstructing it, that's far more critical. So make sure you've got good airflow going to your radiator to ensure, again, you're keeping those coolant temps down and keeping the engine as healthy as possible. Speaking of keeping that coolant cool and talking about big rads, this is the radiator that we're using to replace kind of a similar looking radiator that's already in the car. Now, when I bought this, I had a few track mods or performance mods already done to it, which I'll go through in a second. But this thing, this thing is far better built than the one that's in it. Uh, it's by the guys at Elusive Performance, which is a Honda shop based out of here in Melbourne. Um, guys really know their Hondas. Um, obviously a go-to for a lot of Honda guys locally and, and internationally. Uh, and they're always really good to deal with. Not sponsored, but check them out. They're good dudes. Um, but this is, this is a quality piece. Like, they definitely know what they're doing. It's at a good price point. Like, it's not the most expensive radiator you're ever gonna find, but it's also not super cheap. And like I said, the quality is really good. So go check those guys out if you're looking for a rad and other Honda bits. Now, part of maintenance and keeping everything under control is a good set of gauges. These are like the cheapest gauges you can buy that are actually half decent quality. Now, the Buy Autometer, which build a lot of different gauges for a lot of different applications. I think these two cost a couple hundred bucks, if that, um, and they come with all the sensors, all the wiring that you need to get these things running. Um, and what's cool about this is it's the two most important gauges, especially when you have a freshly built motor. It's your oil pressure and it's your water temp. You want your water temp real consistent and within zoned. You don't want it too cold, you don't want it too hot. It's a bit like that three bears story, right? It's gotta be just right. And oil pressure, that's the killer. If that thing drops, you shut that bad boy off and you coast to the side of the track because you do not want to deal with uh, the, the carnage that's going to come out of your sump when you pull over if you keep going. Now that we've got the boring stuff all out of the way, the important stuff, but boring stuff, let's talk about some of the fun, completely unnecessary things that are going into this car. This. Guys, I know we're looking at a piece of ribbon. Well, it's, it's like a bit of a seatbelt. But this is probably going to be the most used part on this entire build. This is your tow hook. This attaches to the front or the back, uh, attaches to the chassis. So when you end up in a gravel trap or off the track or backwards on the middle of the track and your car doesn't want to start again, this is what they're going to hook you up to and drag you off to safety. I haven't had to use one too many times, but when I have, I'm glad I've got one. Um, so definitely invest in a half decent one and put it somewhere that's not going to rip off half your car when the tow truck driver quickly attaches and zooms off. This, this is super unnecessary. And it's not what you think it is, I promise. Uh, this, is a, this is a short shift kit uh, by the guys at uh, Jack Spania, um, who, who built a whole bunch of random and whiz-bang Honda stuff, and for other cars too. It's, it's, it's a pretty quality piece, um, but effectively it's, it's got a lockout so you're not chucking into reverse while you're racing around the track. Um, it's, it's, it's cool because it looks different, but honestly, it's got that whole touring car, like sequential vibe. Uh, so I'm, I'm down for it. You know, do I need a massive gold rod in the middle of my interior? I don't know, you tell me, maybe I do. Uh, but looking forward to seeing how this feels and how it actually performs out on track. Now, jumping over to this. This is a controversial piece. This is the underdrive pulley that runs the motor effectively attaches to the crank, 
It's got the keyway. There's so many theories out there. Do you need it to be fully balanced? Do you need it to have all the rubber and, and, and so on and so forth for the insulation to keep it from vibrating? Or will something that's pure metal on metal? I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, so, you know, look forward to this either shearing off mid-session or lasting. I don't know, put a comment down below. Tell me what tribe you're in. Should this be one of those big fancy Dabna ones or will this hold up for this season? Uh, yeah, let me know. Now, this is one of my favorite bits. Totally geeking out on you guys. Huh? Huh? Game Boy, right? Wrong. Wrong, pay attention. No, this, yeah, Game Boy shell, uh, but it's been modified to be a speeder that works off GPS. Yeah, I know, super unnecessary. The car has a speedo that I think works from memory, but this, it's a Game Boy and a speedo. And it's like a USB, I can plug it into whatever and just feel retro af and cool as. Okay, go on, light me up, flame me in the comments. I don't care, I like it. Stuff for you guys. I know I said budget, but I think this is really important. And I'm really excited to see how this goes out there on the track. What we're looking at is a dirty gearbox. What's inside that counts, which is something my mum always said when people said I looked funny. Now, that's probably why me and the gearbox get along. But inside this gearbox, special gear ratios uh, done by the guys at HGG. Um, if you don't know who they are, look them up. Um, they do amazing work on gearboxes for Hondas all across the globe. Again, not sponsored, but good work's good work. And good people in the community are hard to find. So definitely check these guys out. So special gearing, uh, a different final drive to bring it down. The idea is to keep this in its sweet spot of being super revvy fun times in VTEC mode as much as humanly possible around the track. And look, that's gonna work out great on some of the smaller tracks. And I'll probably run out of gearing on some of the bigger tracks like Phillip Island and things like that. So we get to explore that together and, and we'll be able to see how this goes. Also inside this gearbox is a, a 1.5 way LSD. Uh, so that's a limited slip differential, not the other kind of LSD that makes you trip. With the 1.5 way LSD, it's an M's factory unit. So it's full JDMF and it's also just a really quality piece. And like I said, this isn't something that you need to do if you're just building a budget racer. But you know, at the time I had the means, I had the ability and I was able to get one built. Um, and like I said, I haven't run it yet, but I'm super excited to see how this thing performs out on the track. This is it. This is literally the whole build right here in this averagely painted valve cover of a single cam D16 Honda Screamer. A bit about this engine. I kind of Frank has signed it together. And everyone's like, yeah, man, that's what everyone does. No, no, but I like literally Frankenstein this together. The block is a D16 Z6 or Z6. This block was actually imported from the US. Why? Well, because it was the only one I could find in a short period of time. What went into that block are some, you know, decent internals. Again, they're slightly better than stock. Are they fully forged and I-beamed? And I-beamed, talking about the con rods and stuff. No, but they are forged and they are shot peened. Um, the crank is knife edged, uh, which means it should be slicking off the oil get that, that gets stuck to it. You need the oil to get stuck to it. But again, it's to build that efficiency and that usage around the oil. Um, and, and again, just to keep that oil flow moving and keeping it within that, that right oil pressure zone that you really want to. Um, and then the head, the head I was, I mean, I about what I was going to do. Do I just get a standard head? Do I modify? So many options. What, what we ended up doing was, I ended up getting this head that was already built um, out of Perth. Um, and it was already ported. Um, it already had some cool stuff done to it. Uh, I put in brand new springs, brand new valves, all high performance stuff. Because in the middle of this is a Skunk 2 Stage 3 race camshaft. And even if I had a camera here, it's actually really hard to tell, but the lobes, like the VTEC lobe on this thing is massive a bit like the jungle, which is also massive, but it just clears the cradle by like teeniest, weeniest poof teeth. But what I'm trying to say is it's a really lumpy little aggressive cam. So I'm excited to see how this performs out on the track and what it does for the VTEC range. Like, will it be too screamy? Will I fall out of the power band? Will it take me forever to get back into the power band? Will I be able to rev this to 9,000 to 20,000 RPM? Who knows? We're all going to find out together. Um, but 
as you can see, it's missing a few bits and pieces. There's still stuff on the way that are going into it. Um, we've already got the clutch that we're gonna take out of the old engine, um, and that's a custom Exedia unit. Uh, which was supplied by Exceedia Australia back when this car was first running. Um, and it's got a lightweight flywheel and that kind of fun stuff too. But motor-wise, like I said, built bottom end, nothing too crazy. Decked, shot painted, all that kind of stuff. And the head's been flowed um, and will be matched to the um, Skunk 2 intake manifold that is coming. Um, I've got a huge, I think it's like an 80 mil throttle body. I feel it's probably gonna drown the engine in air. So I'm actually gonna be running the 66 mil initially uh, just to kind of see that we can get the tuning right and make sure the car doesn't splutter and spit too much and is actually drivable. Um, so all things that we're gonna explore and play with over the course of this entire experience. But super excited to get this into the end of the car as soon as possible, which if you're gonna stay tuned, will be definitely next episode. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to hear it where it's the way head off.